Yo, what up? This is Mike Brown, and this is The Art of Letting Go. Today, I got a special guest in the building. Um, shit, man, I, I think I've been knowing you probably since like 04. So just to see like all your transitions as an artist from shit, you know, like just beginning and doing tattoos and now shit, like you said today, doing a whole damn mural, mm -hmm. like just your progression, man, has been amazing and so inspiring. Um, can you introduce the people to yourself? Yeah, my name is Ko. People call me Ko Young. I'm a, a New Orleans native, born and raised. I'm a visual artist. I'm a music producer and newly video director. So if it involves a creative process, somehow I like to be involved with it. And man, it, it, it seems like you don't stop. Like, uh... How do you keep going? Because I know a lot of the creatives that I've been talking to lately, like they've been saying how they, they don't feel inspired or they feel stuck. But with you, man, I don't, I don't, I don't think personally I've ever seen you hit a point like that. Uh, I don't think it'll happen either because it's like I'm, I'm driven by progress. You know what I'm saying? Like I like the way some people look at things is finished. I look at it as, okay, now that – is allowing me to do this. You know what I'm saying? I just, like, finish lines, I look at it like beginning lines to something else, you know, uh, and yeah. free up my time to do something else because it's like, I be having so many ideas, I just be trying to get everything out, even if it's, I'm trying to answer this, uh, it's, it's like, you know how you you have an idea, you rethink it, rethink it, and by the time you get to the third one, you'll probably start there. Yeah. I don't, I, I do one. Whatever I think second, I do that one next. Even if I have seven ideas, I'm going to always start the first idea. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to just keep, because I don't ever look at it as a bad idea. It might be bad timing. But I'm going to always start it just to get it, to get it moving. And even if I got to come back in two weeks and just work on it again, it's like I'm going to get the ideas out. Yeah, and it's funny you say that because uh, I remember when when I first bought my keyboard and you mm -hmm. made some beats on it. You made like three beats in like fifteen minutes, <laughs> and that like that shit blew my mind. <laughs> but it's funny, like I I started to kind of like work like that myself. Like when I moved out here, I would be making beats and start on one beat, and then once once I feel like I I did what I could on that one, just jump to the next one, and then I may jump back to that one like a little later, and uh. You know, people used to think that shit was weird. Like, they didn't understand that shit. Because it's... Now, what you say? I, I, I thought about that recently. It's, it's like, I I have times that I feel like creating something, like working on something new, and there's times where I want to just continue something. It'd be spaces where I really feel like like I, if I'm inspired to do something, I'll never use that time on working on something that I already started. So I use the inspiration time to start something new because I feel like once the idea is out, anytime I, I could just jump back on it anytime. Anytime I'm free, I could just go because the idea is set. I'm just building off it from now. So I don't use my new energy to to keep working on something. I just start something new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then kind of prioritize what needs to be done first. Uh, if I feel like this, you know, it's just, I just direct the energy where I think it should go instead of just finish, 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 and then start over and finish, you know, like. Yeah. So when, when do you know that you are done with something? Um, when my deadline is done. <laughs> <laughs> If, if it's other people projects, I, I kind of just work on it the whole time. But if it's if it's something I'm just doing for myself, like whenever I can walk away from it and just be like, okay, you know, I could add something else, but I don't need to. You know, yeah. I look at it in, in in my head if it's full enough that I could just step away from it, then I just sign it and just let it go. That's what's up. And, and like, as we talking to something else that I thought about was just like, you know, to me, it seemed like you never really seek validation with your mm -hmm. art. 
And um, I used to feel like that. And I really feel like school kind of tainted that for me, like just going to school and, you know, doing the whole engineering program and shit. It was, it was almost like this way, meaning the, you know, the people that are teaching this way is the only way that it can be done. And if you do it any other way, it's not right. And I had, I had to like reprogram myself to like not see things that way, but you know, having that done in repetition, Mm -hmm. it always made me like seek the validation of Mm -hmm. maybe not even a professor, but like just people in general with, with my art, you know? And I guess what I'm trying to ask you is like, what keeps you from doing that? It's like, <laughs> like it's it's crazy as this may sound. Like my my partners and my family, like my cousins, like you you know a lot of New Orleans niggas. So yeah, like niggas don't really niggas don't give you props like that because they don't want, like fuck you up or make you big hated or something. Yeah, somebody can love what you do. They will never tell you, but away from you. They they repping. <laughs> you can't fuck with my father this and that, but they're not gonna show you. So I grew up not just not getting it like that. Like I, a stranger would show me love for some. So it's like I just felt like if I'm working and if nobody telling me that my shit is whack, then it's just cool. But nobody never be like none of my people ever be like nigga that shit cool and this and that. Like. I just, <laughs> 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 That's real though. That's real. So, that's crazy though. It just—I don't even. That's crazy. I rarely even think about stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I—I I, I think about it just because I—I I try to think back to when I first started with, mm-hmm. with almost anything I'm doing. Like even with this podcast, I always think about when I first started this. How was I feeling? What was I? What was I into? What was I doing? And I think that's why I've been so consistent with this shit. Is because I—I don't give a fuck. Like I just. That's what it is though. Because like. As long as you comfortable, as long as you feeling you making a solid move based on how you feel, then right or wrong is just how you feel. Like if imagine if you tried to do something different or try to fit in the mold and that didn't work. Now you just you just fucked up two times. You, know, <laughs> right. you, you just fucked up being your regular self. Man, that was the case, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, as long as you comfortable, it's just like, you know. You you gonna attract what what relate to you, and and as long as you building off that, it's like you can't go wrong. You know what I'm yeah, it and I I had to learn that once I started maturing and shit. I didn't I didn't really know that shit, <laughs> you know, being young and shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, shit is is it's a trip. Like I said, just seeing where you at now, because I'm curious to know, like, how do you balance being a parent with everything that you're doing with the art and stuff? Like, being a parent is hard, dog. <laughs> like, like me and Chantel, we talk about that all the time. Like, you know, it's just even realizing that you have, you know, a number of children. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. Just, it's like you know. It's just like it's 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 not. Woo. Like you grew up. Like I feel like we don't respect our parents enough for the stuff that they did for us. Like because we we didn't know. We don't have no clue. Like the sacrifices they made to keep us moving. Right, but now we here. You know what I'm saying? So it's like yeah. yeah. Like we really just we just do it. Like it's it's responsibility now. But it's just like. It's like parenting ain't something you could consider. Like, if I didn't want to go to work today, I could be like, I'm not coming to this and that. But if you're not, when you're a parent, you in it. Like, every day, as soon as somebody, you know, cry and say something, you got to be there. You know? it's, just, it's, it's a nonstop job. Yeah. Has has it been challenging to, like, balance the work and, and parenting? It is, emotionally, for me. Yeah. Because you know, I'm, I'm there in the morning, and I, I take breaks in the evening. Like I'm be trying to take breaks in the daytime while they still woke instead of working all day and get home and everybody sleep. I'm up. Yeah. And when they get up, I'm sleep. I'm gone back to work. So that that's the thing. I just trying to at least take a break enough so I can see them and eat with them. But 
chill with them, you know, while or everybody at home, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just small stuff like that. Just even if we take a break and just go eat, like instead of me eating here, I just go eat at home or we'll go get pizza or something. Like, you know, just enough to just kinda make the time work. Yeah. What uh what medium are you most inspired to be working in right now? I honestly haven't even started yet. I've been like molding stuff. Okay. I'm just it's I like I'm I'm ready to see more like three D pieces. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So that's 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 what I'm you know kinda geared towards right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what's up, man. Coaches, you know, jewelry. Like I just wanna do I just wanna put my hands on everything because I, I don't I never know what I'd be good at. So I just wanna try everything. Did you see yourself doing all this in 04? Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. I I just thought I would I would have been like the best tattoo artist. That's all I was like. Like that's what I was locked in on. Like I just wanted to be the best tattoo artist. <laughs> yeah. And now that's the thing, like, I probably care about the least, to be honest, like, I don't, you know. That's funny. <laughs> and, like, you you really remind me of uh, Mr. Cartoon, just to be honest with you. Like, I heard him speak out here at an event, mm-hmm. but, like, just seeing where he started and, like, how he, like, just doing everything. Like, it don't even seem like the, the tattoos. And remember, he was the man with the tattoos. I know. So that's dope. Cause it's like tattooing is just so personal and it's so one at a time. Like it's so limited. And yeah. Like, like if I make a product and I can produce a thousand of those products and sell all of them at the same time, you'll never be able to do that with tattooing, no matter how much you charge. You know? Yeah. How do you feel like uh, all this coronavirus stuff is gonna affect like the tattoo game? Because you know it 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 is close proximity and all that. Like, what do you think is going to happen with that? I just think, I told people, even when this calmed down, like, I'm going to be masked up like a nail tech. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, that's just protocol now. Yeah. <laughs> we used to, you know, like, blood-borne pathogens and all that. So we we know how to react and not be cross-contaminated, but it's different when it's airborne, you know what I'm saying? Or somebody sneeze or some shit like that. Yeah. No, for real. Yeah, same same precautions would just be messed up though. Yeah. Shit, man. Some, something I like to ask all my guests um, is what advice would you give to your younger self? Like just something that you learned on your journey. To if you really serious about it, plan for it. Be patient. Like, don't treat something that you're really passionate about like a quick lick, like it's something that's just going to happen. Like, if you if you know you're going to be doing it, ain't no rush to get it right. You know what I'm saying? Follow the steps. Make everything official and get comfortable if you know you're going to stick with it. You know what I'm that's real. And I got I got one more for you cuz uh I just thought of this one as I was talking to you. But man, what advice do you have for any like any creatives right now? And that's for that's for at any stage in their career where they just starting out or you know doing this forever. You just got to be honest with yourself. Like don't feel so pressured to just move just at the the pace that the world is going. Like step back, you know what I'm saying? Don't feel like you always got to do something because that's what an artist looks like. Fuck that shit, man. Like, work where you feel like working and just make that piece of work count. So you can clear your head for the next piece and then make that one count. And then you have a flow going. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up, man. Man, where can the people find you? Um, Across the board, I'm at Core Artwork, C-E-A-U-X Artwork, I-G, at Gmail if you want to email me. On Twitter, it's the same thing. Facebook, even though I ain't knowing that like that, but I'm, I'm across the board at, at Cool Artwork. That's a bet, man. I appreciate you being on the show. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, I appreciate y'all listening. This is Mike Brown, and this is The Art of Letting Go.
Peace. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of The Art of Letting Go. If you like what you heard, please be sure to subscribe to us wherever you listen to this podcast and leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Let other people know what you think as well. If you want to get in touch with us, hit us up on all social media at The Art of Letting Go Podcast. Also, you can send me an email, theartoflettinggopodcast at gmail.com, or give us a call. Leave a message. We might play it on the show. 213-394-2773. Also, if you would like to support The Art of Letting Go, we got some really cool merch, as well as we're now on Patreon. You can find us, The Art of Letting Go Podcast. Subscribe to us. Thank you guys for listening. This is Mike Brown, and this is The Art of Letting Go.